can't believe I'm making this video. Uh, it is uh, with a very heavy heart and extreme sadness that I'm coming to you today. On Tuesday night this week, Jim Arnold, our brother in Christ and in the work of the ministry here, died. Um, to be specific, uh, Jim's mortal body was what died. Jim did not, not die. Jim is more alive today than he ever was when he was here with us. Um, <clears throat> we're still awaiting the coroner's report for the cause of death. Um, but what we know now is he went to sleep. And when he opened his eyes again, he was in the presence of his Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, as 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8 tell us. <clears throat> Jim was only 42 years old at the time of his death. Uh, he leaves his wife of 19 years behind, Angela, and his three young sons. Um, we are all shocked, uh, terribly saddened. Uh, Jim's life and his presence here will be sorely missed by not only his family uh, and all of his friends, of which there were hundreds, uh, but also this, this church family, this body, an assembly of believers. So we who remain must carry on the work and press on until it's our turn for our mortal bodies to die or to be caught up in the air. But for Jim, one thing we could take comfort in is we know by faith in God's word that this has been, for Jim, the greatest week of his whole life. His blessed hope, Titus 2.13, is no longer a hope. He is living in the blessed reality of it, the blessed present of it. He's now, as Titus 2.13 says, he's with the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So for Jim, the faith and the Bible that he believed and trust, trusted and taught and preached, that faith is now sight. His work as an ambassador is complete. And 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58 is now Jim's present position. And I want to read those verses. So in this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I know if there was any way Jim could communicate with us right now, he'd be waving his Bible like he always did and telling us this next verse, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And we're so happy now for Jim that he's able to see some of the results of his labor. Now, I'm speaking to you on a Friday night. Jim's funeral is being held tomorrow, and uh, we won't be recording any more videos from the assembly this week for any more meetings. Um, but I did want to put out uh, for you, especially you all in the online audience who may have been blessed through Jim's workmanship or encouraged, um, if, if any of you want to communicate uh, that or anything else to his family, to his surviving family, his wife or his kids, both of his parents are still alive and uh, both of his in-laws are, are very close as well, and his sister-in-law. Um, if you want to send any communication to them, you can send it to the address that I'm going to put on the screen here. Um, if you want to send them any support, um, 
I'll make sure that I personally uh, get it to Angela's front door. Um, I've also been informed that uh, there's been a fund set up for his three boys' education. Um, I will, I'll put that information on this screen as well if you're so inclined to, um, to help out with his children. Uh, I didn't know, last time I saw Jim, I didn't know it was going to be the last time. And last time on this earth, anyway. And I'm sure he had no idea his time of departure was at hand. But I can confidently say this about Jim. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, and I'm going to paraphrase the verse here. Jim preached the word. Jim was instant in season, out of season, repu reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse 5, Jim watched in all things, endured afflictions. Jim did the work of an evangelist and made full proof of his ministry. He didn't know he was ready to be departing. He didn't know that the time of his departure was at hand, but I can tell you this about Jim. He fought the good fight. He finished his course. He kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give him. And also to all them that love his appearing. So that is the official statement uh, from us at the Grace Bible Ambassadors Ministry here in Ohio regarding the graduation to glory of Jim Arnold. Now, I wanted to, to speak now informally uh, about Jim. And I know that a lot of you in the online audience, you know, all you see is, is the lesson and that's all you see. You don't get to see uh, the men in the building talking before service, after service. You don't get to see how they are in their day-to-day -day lives or how they deal with their children and their spouses and their family. Um, and I've been thinking for the past few days, how can I sum up Jim in one sentence? Um, because there's just so many facets to who he was to us here. Um, and I think I've got it. Here's summing up Jim in one sentence. Jim, Jim Arnold was the best man in the room, no matter what room he was in. Jim Arnold was the best man in the room, no matter what room he found himself in. I'm going to read to you something my wife wrote about him. We all call him Big Jim around here. His family called him Jimmy. Um, Big Jim was a bright and big personality, charismatic, compassionate, humorous, full of life, and he knew no strangers. He was an ambassador and defender of the faith, and the worn pages of his Bible showed how much he studied to show himself approved. He was passionate to see people come to salvation by simply trusting in the completed work of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And he would want each of you hearing this to hear it and place your faith in it as well. And that's the thing that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people come to church to get. Um, Jim Arnold was not one of those people. No matter where he was, he was giving. If he was giving his time, his attention, his compassion, his love, his money, he was always giving, always supporting. And, you know, I, I'd watch him as he comes into the building, and whoever he's coming in contact with, he's checking, how you doing? How can I pray for you? What's going on in your life? Tell me. That's just the kind of man he was. Um, He, would just, he was the most supportive and encouraging man. He loved helping people understand their Bibles and, and deepen their faith in God's Word. 
or sometimes he just simply listened. Um, sometimes he just simply listened and encouraged. And the thing about him is, you know, we men can be kind of dopes. We can kind of float through our days on an autopilot. Um, but Jim was not that kind of guy. He was very involved and engaged as a parent of his three boys. Uh, very involved and engaged as a husband, very intentional, charting out how to teach his children what they needed to know about the gospel, about doctrine, about the way the world works. He's very, very hands-on, very involved, uh, definitely not on autopilot. Um, what's been remarkable uh, since he died is... Uh, just the immense amount of people that he blessed in his short 42 years. I'm not on Facebook, but my wife is, and um, there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people commenting on what Jim did for them or what he gave to them or how he blessed them or how he encouraged them or how he supported them or how he always gave great advice and listened. Um, how Jim always sent you a message on your birthday and encouraged you and, and told you he was praying for you. Just, just hundreds and hundreds. It, it's almost like, when did Jim, when did you get all the time to bless this many people? It's like he did, in 42 years, he did 142 years of work. Sowing into the lives of people. Sowing spiritual fruit, which will redound unto the glory of God for all eternity. He definitely laid on the Pauline foundation and he took heed how he built thereupon and he's going to have a great pile of gold, silver, and precious stones. He built on the right foundation with the right Bible, the right message, the right apostle, and the right doctrine rightly divided. And he did it with love and care and compassion and humor and sometimes seriousness. He, he was the best man in the room, no matter what room he found himself in. And we're going to miss him terribly. I printed off just a couple examples of some of the com hundreds of comments that come in. It said, Jim Arnold was a dear friend and brother. I cannot count the times he reached out to me, prayed for me, kicked me in the tail for doing things I knew were not right, and was always a loving friend. I know heaven gained one of the best. You'll be missed, Big Jim. Another one, I don't know if you could have a more concise um, and yet more powerful compliment to him. Someone wrote, Jim Arnold was one of the most genuinely joyful men I knew. I am a better Christian, husband, and father because of him. So we've lost here an ambassador, a soldier, a friend, brother in Christ, teacher and a preacher. Jim's wife, Angela, is now a young widow. His three boys have lost their daddy. If you're anything like me, you feel some pretty strong emotions at a time like this. I'm sad and I'm angry that he's gone. I know he's having great days and I'm happy for him, but I'm sad, I'm angry. His boys have lost their daddy. Daddy's not gonna be there at the sidelines of the sports games anymore. Daddy's not gonna be there at breakfast. Daddy's not gonna be there at dinner time or playing around on a Saturday. I'm sad, I'm angry about that. His wife doesn't have her husband. His parents and his in-laws have lost their son. If you're anything like me, I'll admit it. 
when I found out Jim was gone, once the shock and the disbelief and all of the, the processes, when it finally sunk into my brain that he was in heavenly places with the Lord, I thought to myself, really? This person is still alive, but Jim's dead? Really? That person over there is still alive, but Jim's dead. You probably thought the same thing, too, if you're honest. Why do we think that? Well, one good reason is there are very few Jims out there. And there's a whole big pile of that person out there. So we have all the emotions. We have all the thoughts. We have all the, the processing of the grief and the loss and um, taking care of his lo remaining loved ones. But we go to our Bible. And what does our Bible tell us? in these kinds of situations. If we look at 2 Corinthians 4 in verse 15, it says, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. What cause? The glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Look at verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. I guarantee you it doesn't feel like a light affliction in the Arnold household today. I guarantee you it's not a momentary trouble or sorrow or grief or pain at the Arnold household today. Why does our Bible say that then? Doesn't our Bible understand who we are? Yeah, our Creator understands who we are. He understands how we operate. Let's read the rest of the passage. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So you see the comparison, like the scales way out of balance. Exceeding weight of glory, light affliction of this life. Here's the secret. Here's why our Bible can tell us this. Because our Bible tells us in this next verse that if we look at it from Jim's perspective today, Jim's perspective in heavenly places with his Savior for all eternity, looking back at this life and this world through his eyes, that's how we see it's a light affliction, which is but for a moment. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, those things which Jim is currently seeing. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporary, passing. Things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We can't see that it's light and momentary because we lack the perspective. We have to believe by faith these words on the page of our Bible and then put ourselves in that mindset out in eternity and look at our present grief and our present sadness and our present sorrow from Jim's point of view today. He sees it now clearly. He sees it from the eternal perspective and we should follow his lead as we press on in grief. What's another thing our Bible tells us that doesn't seem quite appropriate today? In verse 1 Thessalonians 5.16 our Bible says rejoice evermore. You feel like doing that today? Pray without ceasing. Look at the next verse. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Really? I'm supposed to give thanks for this? Really? 
This is horrible. This is a tragedy for his family. What in the world is worthy of thanksgiving about a 42-year-old man dying in his sleep? The key is to what the Bible verse actually says. The Bible doesn't say, give thanks for everything. It's not what it says. It says, in everything, give thanks. So my Bible tells me everything, that's, that's everything. So that would encompass this death in our assembly this week. This is a thing. This is a bad thing. It's a horrible thing. It's a sad thing. But I'm told the will of God for me, for my life, is that even in this, I'm supposed to be able to give thanks. So that's what I'm going to try to do for the next couple of minutes. I'm going to try to find ways to give thanks in this horrible thing that's under the umbrella of everything. My, my first thing I could be thankful for is tomorrow at his funeral, I'm not going to be saying goodbye forever. I'm going to be saying, see you later. You're first in line at the last trump. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. And Jim always laughed when I said that's the biggest denomination in America. I would have, not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So we sorrow, but we're not sorrowing in a hopeless manner. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. I will be seeing my brother Jim again in heavenly places. That's something I can be thankful for. That's something his wife can be thankful for. That's something his children can be thankful for. And all of his family that are grieving, they can be thankful that it's, see you later, Jimmy. We'll see in heavenly places. Does it make the grief any less? Maybe a little. It gives you some hope. It doesn't take the sorrow and the loss and the pain away. It doesn't take away the consequences, but it's hope. What's another thing I can be thankful for in this thing? Well, over in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1, he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful that Jim was strong in grace and led his home in the grace message. I'm thankful for that. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples of Big Jim doing just that. He was faithful. The things which he heard, the doctrine which he heard, he committed to faithful men who were able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He was he was the bumper sticker for that. <laughs> stay positive, stay loving, stay kind, press on, be a good soldier. So I'm thankful in this horrible thing for, for the knowledge and the strength and grace and his workmanship in Christ. I'm thankful in for Jim's faithfulness, for his teaching and preaching and the work that he sowed into the lives of so many other people, because that's all we're going to take with us, is people. I'll tell you a quick story about Jim. When I first talked to him, um, He introduced himself. He started telling me his, his back story and, and how he got saved and how he trusted the gospel. And um, Then he says, 
Now, I've watched over 250 hours of you preaching and teaching on the Internet. And it sounded like he was about to swerve into some kind of a compliment. And the folks here know I, I don't do compliments very well. Um, so he tells me, I've watched 250 hours of you teaching and preaching on the Internet. And I cut him off and I said, oh, so you're a crazy person. And he just blacked out for a second and just started laughing, his big, boisterous laugh. And that's, that's how we started uh, getting to know each other. And um, just an infectious laugh. And I got, I got to hear it right off the start. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm sorry, let me continue on. Um, what's another thing I could be thankful for in this awful thing? Well, the way in which he died, quite honestly, he didn't suffer. Uh, he wasn't in pain and bedridden with some debilitating disease or cancer for months and years on end. He, he literally died the death that we all hope one day we'll have. We go to sleep and we open our eyes in heavenly places. Granted, it's about 40 years too soon for Jim, but I can be grateful that my friend and my brother in Christ did not suffer. He went to sleep and he woke up with the Lord. I can't think of a better wake up than that. And there's not very many of us who are going to get out of this life without putting up with a fair amount of physical suffering. Most of us will have to endure some kind of physical suffering before we leave this mortal coil. So I'm thankful for that, for my brother. Um, one more thing, and then I'll wrap this up. And like I said, there won't be any more uh, videos this week. Another thing I could be thankful for in this situation, um, if we take off of Titus 2.11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. What does this grace teach? Does it teach you can just live any old which way and your behavior doesn't matter? Well, let's read the next verse and find out. The grace message teaching us the denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Well done, Jim Arnold. You not only learned the grace message, but you lived it. You were an example to your wife and to your children and the rest of your family and everyone you came in contact with. You couldn't shut Jim up about the gospel. So I'm thankful that he knew the grace message. I'm thankful that he knew the gospel. I'm thankful that he knew right doctrine, and he taught it to his boys. I mean, like I said, his boys, they know how a soul is saved. They know what right doctrine is from the right Bible, rightly divided. Why? Because it osmos into them? No, because Dad taught it to them. And... I'm thankful that because Jim had the passion for the message and the ministry, uh, he wanted to teach and preach. And even though he was a complete ball of nerves every time he got up here, and he, he told us so, he was just so nervous about it, he wanted to get up there anyway. Because he did that, there's now a bunch of videos of him teaching and preaching on YouTube that will stay there forever. The message doesn't die with the messenger. It lives on. And you know, anytime one of his three boys want to hear daddy's voice again, all they've got to do is a few mouse clicks, and there's their dad preaching the gospel, preaching grace, full of life, full of joy and passion. So, it's the will of God in everything, even awful things like this news, to find ways to give thanks. And that's what I can come up with uh, right now. These are some ways we can be thankful even in 
this time of grief. So finally, Jim Arnold, thank you for your life, your service, your example, and your workmanship. You'll be sorely missed, but we press on. Philippians 3.